Hi, I'm Agent Ford. Do you think you can help me solve another true crime mystery? On June the 1st, 2004, in Sasebo, Nagasaki, in Japan, took place one of, if not the, darkest murders to have ever occurred in the area. It involves two young girls, two best friends in fact, the 12-year-old Satomi Matari and another 11-year-old girl who has remained anonymous per Japanese laws affecting juvenile cases such as these. Satomi Matari's name was broadcasted on accident by Fuji Television. We will tell you this story using the pseudonym Girl A for the second girl. Matari and Girl A had been good friends for a couple of years until a small argument erupted between them. Girl A kept a publicly available personal website wherein she would post disturbing horror gifts and write battle royale fan fiction and share content related to the urban legend known as the Red Room. After their argument, Matari began leaving upsetting messages on Girl A's site, primarily vitriolic, mainly targeting her weight and personality. Girl A reacted by bringing a box cutter to their school, Okubu Elementary School. She asked to meet Satomi in an empty classroom during their lunch hour. She prepared the room in advance by shutting down the curtains. When Matari entered the room, she had no idea what was about to happen. Girl A bound Matari to a chair before slitting her friend's throat and arms. Once Satomi was dead, bleeding out on the floor, Girl A kicked her to check for a reaction, then stood and stared for ten minutes. Eventually she came to her senses, left the classroom, found a teacher and, still covered in blood, told her about what had just happened. The school instantly called the authorities in, and girl A was apprehended. She immediately admitted guilt and cognizance of the severity of her crime, sobbing uncontrollably while saying, I am sorry, and I have done a bad thing. She was held at the precinct where she refused to converse with anybody, nor eat or drink, as reported by the Manichi newspaper, she told investigators that she was inspired to use a box cutter by a television drama she had seen and had planned the murder four days before the incident occurred. While there, she was evaluated by a psychologist who determined her not to be suffering from any mental health disorders. On the other hand, the expert said she suffered from Hakikimori syndrome a Japan-centric phenomenon wherein individuals withdraw from the world and don't leave their home much or socialize unless required. Later diagnosis revealed girl A has Asperger's syndrome, resulting in fixations in social anxiety among other psychosocial complications. This correlates with her website and its content. Classmates and teachers later painted girl A as a child who had fallen into internet conspiracies and antisocial tendencies, culminating in physical altercations in the past instance involving her brandishing a knife. In the end, the 2005 Okabu Elementary graduation alumni were given a customizable version of their graduation album with the choice to include either of the girls. Any unused photographs were destroyed afterward. One thing nobody could have expected was her fan base. Within days, there were posts, fan art, and fan fiction written about Girl A across Futuba Channel and 2chan. She was cemented into creepypasta legend status, with people romanticizing her crimes as if she were a fictional entity. Within no time, her fictional form surpassed the real-life identity and exploits of Girl A to become Nevada Tan. 
The name originated from a photograph of her that circulated online wherein she wore a hoodie with the word Nevada across the chest. She was often depicted holding a box cutter and covered in blood. Needless to say, it was the excess glorification of an actual event that traumatized those involved. But this was common practice across Japanese internet boards and forums, especially in the 2000s. Girl A's website skyrocketed in popularity and has been replicated and re-hosted through the years despite initial termination. Within no time, the case and meme were picked up by international and western news sources and forums like 2chan and Nevada Tan went global. The case was even given a name, the Sasebo Slashing, and entered the hall of other renowned murders of the 21st century. This compounded into ongoing debates regarding internet exposure to children and lowering the age of criminal responsibility in Japan. There were already many who believed it should be reduced from 16 to 14, following the Kobe Sakikabara murders of 2000, and this case only reinforced their argument. After careful deliberation, Girl A was sentenced by the Japanese family court to two years of reformatory incarceration in Tojiki Prefecture on September the 15th, 2004, despite her young age due to the severity of the case. This sentence was extended by two years in September 2006. From there, we have conflicting reports of her releasing in either 2008 or 2017, following further extended stays. Still, it's speculated she served her time and was released to reincorporate into society with every protection given to her identity and release date. We know she was given a graduation certificate to help with reintegration into junior high following extensive counseling and juvenile center placement. Since the event, we've had no reliable or solid information on the whereabouts of Girl A. Allegedly, she had a change of name and managed to graduate is no longer in Hikikomori, and has a good relationship with her family. As she was born in 1992, she would be about 29 years old now. There are minor leads, but honestly, we shouldn't look into it. She did something truly awful at a very young age and exclaimed guilt immediately. She has reportedly served her time and rehabilitated. And if we never see her again, that's a good thing. We should remember Satomi Matari more than Nevada Tan, though by this point that's likely impossible. The meme overshadowed the perpetrator, already overshadowing the victim at some point, and that's sad. There was a large amount of scrutiny cast on the officials and police who worked on the case, with them placing the utmost amount of security and confidentiality on Girl A and her family, while the Mataris were forced to endure cameras and journalists at their daughter's funeral. At every opportunity, the legend of Nevada Tan was built, but ultimately, this was an unfortunate and disastrous outcome to a friendship dispute between two little girls. Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comments below. I always look forward to reading your interesting theories. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your fellow investigators. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a case. With that being said, stay safe, and I'll see you guys at the next crime scene.